Hello, welcome to another episode of A Sheepish Podcast. A podcast about, nice timing with the dog there, about knitting and living my crafty life. I will say right from the off though that this episode is primarily concerned with knitting. So, and the fibre arts, I don't have any crochet actually, um, but last month's episode was pretty long, so I've decided because I've been knitting like a demon and sewing like a demon this last month, I decided to split it into two episodes and also I want to talk about a new knit along. So today it's going to be all about knitting. I live on the south coast of the UK, which as we speak is currently being battered by Storm Kieran. Although we haven't got it too bad, even though Honey's just decided she wants to go in the garden. Honey is my spring espanol, um, my baby girl who's 14 and a half. Come and settle down, you don't need to go out. She's been out twice, so good girl. There, hopefully she'll go back onto the sofa behind me shortly and settle down. Uh, yes, anyway, digression as always. So yes, this is all about knitting and my crafty knitting life from October. So it's kind of my October report. I should call this the November list because for those of you who've watched, I have a big long to-do list and each month I pick some projects off that to-do list and focus on those for the month. That said, I occasionally throw in unplanned projects, <laughs> as you do, and there are certainly some of those coming along. So I think that's all I was going to talk about. I wasn't going to go into any great detail. Um, my darling husband is off today, but he's out at the moment, so I thought, right, I'm gonna get this recorded because there's no way I could record this with him sitting in the next room. It's hard enough with the dog here. So, yeah, that's it. I think that's probably it. Oh, yes, you can find me as Clara Pegarty on Instagram. And my email address is sheepandcheerfulpodcast at gmail.com. And I will put those down below. Thank you so much for all your comments on last month's episode. As I say, I think the, the time duration probably put a few people off. Um, it was super long. Uh, but those of you who stuck in there and who wanted to enter the giveaway, which was, oh, I haven't got the actual socks down here, but if you remember, I made some socks and I had these two yarns left over. So there's a good, oh, I've actually got my scales here. I could weigh this. Let's see. What, ah, what have we got? Come on, work. So the yarn badger yarn, wow. 74 grams of that self-striping, sparkly, gorgeous yarn called Wonderland. I won't spend too, too long on this because obviously I talked about it last episode, but oh, I got them tangled, mummy. Okay, so that's the yarn badger. So that's Merino Sparkle Sock, and then we've got the Tweed Sock from Hugh Loco. So 75 grams of the self-striping, 50 grams of the tweed. So you've got plenty there to knit. Well, you could knit shorty socks or whatever. And then to go with that was the Sinister Cats tote bag, which was this by Katin and, I want to say Bague but I'm probably mispronouncing her name, so I apologise, um, but it's great. So I have drawn the winner. There were 75 folk uh, comments who wanted to be put in the draw, which is great. And the winner is Brendy R. So well done, Brendy. Um, if you would like to reach out to me either on Instagram or on my email, then I will get these sent off to you post haste. So well done, Brendy R. And again, I will put the name down in the comments just so that you know. So that's the giveaway from last month. And now I really am going to have to let the dog out. Be right back. <laughs> She's 
not impressed. I think she wants some biscuits and things, but she's not going to have any. She's going to have to wait. So, where was I? Yes, we've done the giveaway. So that was from the October list video. So, quite see her. Hang on. You're quite done. Thank you. Oh dear. Hopefully that's not ruined my camera position too much, but I thought I'd just share with you what we have to put up with. The crazy puppy there. Right, on to more interesting stuff, on to knitting. Oh, I do seem to be quite close to you now, didn't I? I see my fizzog in the middle of the screen. Okay, let's start then with my October review, which will then move nicely into my November list. So the first thing I want to talk about was the apple pie hat which was the tin can knits pattern. It's an oldie but a goodie. And I finished it, as was the plan. So there it is. It's a really lovely cable version. Now, <laughs> I talked about the yarn that I used last week, and now of course, not last week, sorry, last episode, it was a King Cole yarn. It was 100% wool and it's super wash. <clears throat> and it's, there you go. It's really lovely. It's really squishy. It's got a double folded brim. I'm gonna take it off because my head is quite big. What am I doing with my hair? Let's just get that all sorted like it makes any difference. Um, my head's quite big and this is a gift for my sister so I don't want to stretch it. I blocked it but laid it just flat. I didn't open it out at all or anything. So it's got the turned brim, so it's got that double super squishy brim. It's Aran weight yarn. So it's, you know, that is really cosy and it's lovely to wear. I would knit this again. You see the the decreases at the top as well. I was watching Amber Yarn Hoarder podcast and she was showing the decreases and I thought, oh, I never do that, I should do that because it just makes the hat look so professional and pretty the way it's finished. So yeah, delightful, I knit it without a cable needle uh, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that once you get the hang of it. And like I say, the squish factor is strong with this one. And that's in the cream or natural colourway. Very budget friendly knit as well. I needed, I bought two balls and I actually only needed one and I knit the medium. So that's such, I really commend that to you. And if you're a beginner for cable, you know, you want to have cables, this is a great pattern to try because they're all pretty straightforward. There's nothing too technical or difficult going on there. So that's the Apple Pie Hat. It's a paid for pattern by Tin Can Knits. And they've also got an app, haven't they? I haven't got, I haven't used it, but I've heard good things said about the app where you can access their patterns, but also all of their videos, all of their tutorials. They really are a very comprehensive pair of designers. So um, yeah, really recommend that. So that is going to my sister, end of next week, it's her birthday and I'm going to be giving her that. So hopefully she will enjoy having that. So that's finished object number one. Finished object number two. Okay, on my list, I had put um, that I wanted to finish my Squad Gold socks, which was another skein of yarn from Hugh Loco, which I started randomly in the summer, but I've got them in here. Um, I'd literally done that much of one sock and didn't do it for me. So 
Instead, I picked up another really, really long outstanding whip, which was a pair of scrappy socks, scrappy shorties. And I'd started knitting these. And I don't know whether I've said this to you before. I've posted this on Instagram, so you may have seen it. But I hitherto have not liked knitting scrappy socks. I like being able to get a skein of yarn, unless it's colour work. But I get a skein of yarn and I like to knit all the way through rather than having to stop every five rows or every six rounds, sorry, and change colour. But I picked these up. They were on DPNs, which I haven't used, I don't know, um, since God was a boy. And really loved, just really enjoyed it. So the first one I had finished, which is that one. I haven't got my sock blockers here and I'm not going to get them. Not going to get them. But you can see, let's have a look, there you go. They're really, really pretty. And this is the, um, I wrote it down, Rose City Rollers pattern. I think it's orange, is it orange knits, I believe. But it's a very popular, again, an old favorite pattern. You don't always have to use a new pattern, do you? So that's that one, it's got the, uh, Heel flap and gusset, slip stitch heel, gusset, and this is just a variety of very old yarns, although I know this one was a friend had dyed this and I used this in one of my shawls. So that was the one I had. I hadn't cast on the second one. So I did. And here it is. And just to prove it, there you go. Oh, I've got so that's my pair of Rose City Rollers. Totally different colour order, although I did start with the uh, with the roll at the top is that lilac colour. But then the rest really was how much and over the summer I've been giving away all my minis and all my scrap yarns because I don't like scrappy socks or scrappy and I've got enough blankets on the go to not knit. So I, I just had a bit of a, a, a clear out, a cathartic clear out. Um, so I had to really dig deep to get the yarn to finish this. And looking at it, I realized I've done a slightly different decrease on the, just on this side. I think instead of doing a slip slip knit, I knit two through the back loop, which I thought at the time was gonna be the same. It's really pretty, it doesn't worry me, but it, the fact is it's different to that side, but hey up, they're socks, they're gonna be on my feet, and if somebody's close enough to see that, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'll kick them into touch. So yeah, variety of colors, I can't tell you what colors they were, but I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed using the DPNs. So um, you never know, I might have another pair Try and get a bit of sock knitting done. I've got plenty of sock yarn. But they're Rose City Rollers, they're for me, which I think is kind of why I didn't want to knit them because I wanted to knit a pair for my daughter. And if they'd have been her size, that would have been fine. But I do like wearing, I realized through the summer I like wearing shorty socks. So that's those, so that's enough of that. Oh, big pigeons just flown over the window. We have some wood pigeons here and they're big, chunky, absolutely gorgeous wood pigeons and they waddle around the garden and I really, really like them. Right, so hat and socks. Right, my next FO, told you there's quite a lot, didn't I? Is my Koivua sweater. So this is the pattern from Caitlin Hunter, Boylan Knitworks. And I have got, let me see this table in front of me is full of, where's the, oh, I did bring it in, so, oh. This, my friends, is my finished sweater. And I'm going to put it on, which means I have to stand up, so I don't know. Hence why I've only got the T-shirt on. But I couldn't have put this on for the whole time because I would have been too hot. There you go. You can't see my face, but that's not a bad thing. 
Look, there it is, in all its glory. I'm getting given the evil eye from honey down there. So, can you see? So it's got a slightly higher, some people call that a mock, mock turtle, but it's a raised collar, which is really nice, it's just enough. And then this beautiful yoke pattern, and you can see the colours of the yarn, I talk about that. Then you've got the texture across here, which is some ribbing, uh, sorry, some knit pearl texture there. You've got this lovely pattern here, some more texture, and then this. I made it shorter and boxier because I felt that was more flattering. Um, and so I didn't go down a needle size for the rib. I stayed the main colour that I used for the main body of the sweater. Then you've got these amazing funky sleeves that look big, but they're not, they're not really cumbersome. I mean, you'd have to be careful reaching across the meal table <laughs> and get ketchup on it. But, and again, the sleeves, it's come in, you've got, it looks a bit distorted there. It doesn't actually bulbous, it's not that bulbous there. But this pattern, then a lot of this, uh, texture there, which I think you can just see, then a bit more there, and then an eye cord bind off, quite loose, which is quite nice. And I think the sleeve length is just perfect. Sort of wrist bracelet, oh, bracelet length. But, come down here so you can see me. It's, um, oh, it's that pigeon again. It's really distracting me. I keep seeing him dive down outside, but I love this. I absolutely love this and the colour graduation from this yarn. So let's talk to you about, I can leave it on just for the moment, I can talk to you about the yarns. So the pattern, as I've said, is the Koi Vua. It seems to be I'm knitting, I'm slowly working through the patterns that were sort of super trendy about 100 years ago. But that's fine by me. Um, I haven't really got... I think I showed you, most of you will have seen this pattern, but that's the pattern on the picture. It's done in cream with the contrasting. Ah, that way. Very trendy girl there. Um, I knit the size large, which was, where were we, B bust. Three, diff, 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 50 inches around, finished, finished 50 inches. My bust is about 44, 45. So this, it's nice and comfy without being totally sort of Michelin man boxy. I also went up a needle size because that's what I do for the most part because I knit on a little bit of a small gauge. Didn't swatch, don't tell the swatch police. And the yarns I used, so I used, um, what size needles did I use? I think it was a four and a half, a four and a half for the main body and a four for the ribbing. But as I said, I didn't change. So the, main, the ribbing of the body and the sleeves I did on the four and a half millimeter. The yarn, was Harrisville Yarns. The main colour is Nightshades in the stiletto. So it's got, you probably can't see it on there, but it's got an overall feel of, of sort of a really fluorescent -y pink, but it's so subtle. And it's such good value yarn. I bought this direct from Harrisville. So obviously I'm in the UK and the shipping and the price, um, I mean, you know, it's not cheap, but it was really reasonable and it's lovely, lovely woolen spun yarn. I really recommend this. And then I think I spoke to you about the Dream State, the Spin Cycle Dream State. And I got this colorway that's been discontinued called Verba Volant. And so because it's been discontinued, I got it reduced and discounted. I had three skeins um, and I only used two. So that worked out brilliantly. 
So yeah, that's the Koivu sweater, which I really, really love. I can't wait to wear it. It's a bit, although the wind is howling and, and everything at the moment, um, it's not that cold indoors. So I'm not gonna be wearing, I'll be taking it off in a moment when I show you my next finish object. In fact, it probably is time for the next one. So let me just whip this off or you can see you get to see the colour work as well, don't you? The uh, people show the strands, don't they? Because it, you know, got to show everything. That's the strands on the inside. It's very pretty. I carry with my colour work. Really don't know what is <laughs> what I do with my hair. Um, with my colour work when I knit, as a rule. I would knit to about five stitches before I carry the float. So if there's less than, than five, maybe six, I think with this one it was five or six depending. If it was a run of six of one colour then I, I wouldn't bother catching the float. Um, because this is wool and spun yarn and naturally quite clingy and sticky. I just would do five stitches before I caught a float. But you can see there's not, there's nowhere in there that there's these massive floats. I've also added a little label. You can see that just to show me the back because it's not always that show you. Can you see that on my screen? It's actually glared out, but hopefully you'll be able to see the little pink heart. And I got those lovely little labels from my friend Jules who has a shop So Sweet Violet and they've got them my float's just caught on my ring yeah. um, they've got little packs in their shop and for I don't know about you I've got several sweaters that I've knit that haven't got an obvious front and back with regard to how high the neck is and so I've started just putting those little tags in and they're really helpful brilliant you don't faff around in the morning trying to work out if you've got something on back to front I must have done this one this was my I've been wearing this today this is my easy V sweater this isn't a new FO so don't get excited one of my favorites actually my easy V Knit entirely from Rowan pure wool worsted it's another Caitlin Hunter one but this neckline is the same front and back and at the moment <laughs> You see, I've, I've got one, a bulb stitch marker, probably can't see that, in the back, so that I can see which is the front and back. So I need to put one of Jules' little labels in that as well. But yeah, this is a big favourite, I love this. We can tell it's down here, I was wearing it this morning. Okay, so that was that. So that's another thing ticked off my list, which I'm really pleased about. So we've done apple pie hat, we've done koi vua, we've done scrappy socks. Uh, right, the next one, the biggie, was an unplanned cast on. Um, and it was spontaneous. I have a lot of indie dyed yarn. Not a stupid amount, because over the years I've used it up and I have given a lot to friends and donated a lot because I sort of stopped using it for our certainly fingering weight because I stopped knitting socks and so on. So I pulled out, am I doing it again? Have I lost my, <laughs> where are I've got all my yarn tags and everything. Again, right here in front of me. Um, I pulled out um, two skeins of yarn that I wanted to use together. I thought they looked right together, two different designers. And I decided to knit, and again, late to the party, the Tolster Tea by Rebecca, I want to say Rebecca Clough, but I don't know, it's not on here, Crabby, she's Crabby, she has a podcast, she's all over Instagram at the moment, her designs are just like amazing, she's, she's on fire at the moment with her designs, but I'd seen a lot of the Tolster Tea, I thought in my mind, it was in my queue and Ravelry, it's a DK weight knit. And I'd heard, I'd seen lots and lots of different iterations of it. And the idea is it's a very straightforward raglan tee. 
it's in DK weight gauge but you can mess around with it and Rebecca herself gives you the chance when you buy the pattern to download different versions so she gives you stripes and also can you see that an eyelet version which I really like I think possibly for the summer I might do the eyelet version I am absolutely smitten by this top um, and you will realize that when you if you've been seeing my Instagram post because we're going to do a knit along we the royal we the sheepish folk who watch my podcast or follow me Clara Pegatty on Instagram but I grabbed these two skeins. I grabbed a skein from Lolo Did It of her plush sock in the colourway Molly Weasley's Knitting. I love Lauren's yarn colourways and the last couple of years I belonged to a couple of her clubs. Um, I bought a lot of her yarn. I had a Christmas box. I love it. I particularly love her sock base thank you um, it's called l'original l apostrophe original and it's a three ply fingering weight yarn and that has, has to be my most favorite yarn of all time my best favorite sock yarn and everything it's absolutely gorgeous and i always go for that if i get the chance this one is a four ply this uh, Molly Weasley's Knitting Plush Sock. I obviously couldn't get this on L'Original. And that is the colourway. Really pretty, sort of corally orangey speckled with grey. Can you see that? So that's the first one. The second one I had was from Christy at Yarn Cafe Creations. Hang on, I'm edging closer. This is it's a very old label. I've had this yarn for a few years. Can you just about see Young Cafe Creations? And this is on her Espresso Fingering 4 Ply, which is 100% Superwash Merino, and it's called Riverbed. I don't know if she still does the colourway, but the Espresso base is her 100% Merino Superwash. And I thought these two looked quite good together. So I picked those out of my stash. But I wasn't sure, um, I wanted it, obviously it needed to be made up to DK weight. So I, my plan was to stripe these. So I made up the gauge difference by throwing in something that I think I bought for another sweater. But this, and I'm oh, totally in love with this yarn, Camarose Midnatasol. And it was the... LYS Pudder, I'm not sure what colourway that is, but and so you can see it's 54% baby alpaca, 36% tencel, and 10% merino. I don't know what that is, I should have looked that up. I used to know what tencel was, but I can't tell you for fear of getting it wrong. But these come in 25 gram balls, and I think. I kept the labels for the others, but I didn't keep, I think I used three. But again, really, really um, pocket friendly, budget friendly price. That's that yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. So that was gonna be my combination for my very first Tolster tea. And it was really a question of making it up as I go along, the, the color distribution. So, here it is, and you can tell that I'm pleased with it. There is my Dolster tea, and I will put it on. Don't actually need a label on this because the back is raised up. I'm not sure you might be able to see my T-shirt. I do struggle with the back of my... Here we go. So there. Not so there, but this looks a little bit darker because I've got the blue on underneath. But basically, I striped it. I did four row stripes. So I started, oh, that's better. Go the right way. Uh, <laughs> so this top bit I did in the Yarn Cafe Creations colorway. Then I got to about there and decided I'd start the striping. 
So you've got, I can't, I'm hoping you can see the striping here. So that's where that one came in. And then I got down to about here and I had here, I had in mind that I wanted a colour block, but I obviously wasn't sure on how much yarn I'd be using up. But I decided I wanted the brighter colour at the bottom, so I colour blocked it. And then I added the bottom ribbing in the brown again. I did the same, the ribbing on the sleeves in the brown. So we've got the top, so it's framed, it's kind of bordered in the Yarn Cafe Creations Riverbed colourway. And then the contrast colour is Molly Weasley's knitting. Throughout held double or held with the Midnatasol. And it is just, I can't stop that stroking, stroking my belly. It is such a lovely, and again, I made it, oh, my tippy toe here. Little, so it's sitting on my hips. Didn't go down a needle size for the rib, left it sort of fairly loose, but oh, it's such a comfy, easy, um, that one, no, that way, it's a bit wonky. Easy top to wear. Honestly, I, I cannot commend this enough. And the knit, it probably took me a couple of weeks to knit. Because once you've done the raglan, once you've done the raglan shaping, here, there you go, so you've got the raglan, and then it's just split, uh, split, knit the body, and the sleeves you can knit as long as they're as short as you like. I added about, I think I added three stripes on before I did the ribbing. But, let's go back a bit further, so I'll go behind the chair. There you go. Again, Hannah's looking at me saying, what are you doing, woman? But I'm so pleased with this. And I've just got, obviously, jeans on today. And the nice thing is that, at my age and stage, I get hot really quickly. Um, so layers or short sleeve tops are really good news for me. And this is going to be, well, staunch favourite as well really easy to wear. Um, I went out this morning and I went to a shop and I knew I'd be hot. I was meeting a friend for coffee. So okay, actually it was its first its first trip into the wild. Get that out of my face. So yeah, really, really for it. And the fit again, it's just lovely. I knit the fifth size, size five. It comes in 10 sizes. So it goes up to 66 and three quarter inches. I knit the 47 and a quarter, but I don't, I did go up a needle size, so I knit it on a 5.5 .5 instead of a 5. Um, and the, so that's given me what, about two and a half inches, three inches of ease. I've probably got a little bit more than that. This isn't blocked either. I haven't blocked it. To be honest, I don't even think I will, because otherwise I won't be able to wear it. <laughs> so yeah. The Crayer Bee. And that, should I talk to you about the Knit Along Hal? Okay, we're on half an hour, that's all right. So before I talk to you then, um, no, we'll come back to that. I just want to talk to you about one more that I had on the October list, and then we'll come back to the Knit Along, which is all about the Toaster Tea. So the other project I had on my list last month was the Tetagouche hat, which was in the Kate Davis book. I'm going to have to reach across to get this. Excuse me. I've got in my lovely hohi bag that was a Christmas present a few years ago. Here we go, my Millerocky Hides book. You'll recall that I'd already knit the Braywick hat which I showed you, wore well, that this morning as well, and my big poncho, so it was really, really knitting you weather. And this is a picture of the Tetagouche. That was the one I was aiming to knit, which I just love. I think, had the yarn arrived? I think it, I might have had to wait for a little bit more yarn. It's knit in Kate Davis's Miller Rocky Tweed, which is one of my 
all-time favourite sort of, um, it's not really rustic, but it's um, natural yarn, rustic. It's, you can see it's thick and thin, it's a fingering weight. But again, it's tweedy and absolutely love this yarn. I've knit a sweater from it with it, a top, and I knit my hat, and I want to knit lots more things using this because although it's quite thin, it's just wonderful and it gives you such a lovely fabric knit up. And it's, what is it? 70% wool, 30% mohair. So it's, yeah, lovely. So I didn't finish the Tete Gauche hat. I posted on Instagram a couple of days ago, was I gonna get it done? I've been so taken with knitting the, um, the, the tolster um, and it was so easy to knit because it's just stockinettes and yeah, I basically didn't get round to finishing the tete gauche but I will show you how far I've got and it will be done fairly imminently because it's starting to look rather gorgeous and as soon as it starts to look rather gorgeous I just want to knit on it. So there you go. Look, so I love a corrugated rib. And then this teal, these colours, the teal and the brown are so stinking gorgeous. Excuse my French. I probably shouldn't have said that, should I? But, you know, didn't mean anything by it. There you go. Isn't that so, so pretty? There you are, you can really see it there. And again, the, oh, you can see the floats, no problems there. And you can see quite how fine, it's quite a fine yarn, but it's sort of thick and thin. But it is just a joy to work with. Oh, I just got messed on my phone, sorry about that. Um, and so this, I am probably, let's have a look at the chart. Oh, sorry, this is by Virginia sattler Um, and it is in the Kate Davis Book of Hats, but it was designed by her. I will put the link below. I don't know if you can get the pattern separately on Ravelry, but possibly. Um, and I am, yeah, I'm halfway through the main body of the hat there. There's another section that is about this length again, and then you start the decreases. So... I've really not got a lot more to do. So that was the Tete Gauche. So that's on November's list to complete and the beginning part of November. There. So that was that. Right, so that's all the stuff I'm going to share from uh, the October list. Oh, in case anyone's wondering, uh, I've put my blanket knitting on hold because with Christmas coming up, with these projects I wanted to get finished, the blanket knitting wasn't getting done and I'm not going to keep putting it on the list if I keep failing to do any of it. So it's gone away. January probably will be when I pull out my blankets again and start working on those. So the whole point of this is not to use it as a weapon to beat myself over the head with. It's kind of like what ideally I would like to get done. It's a little jog of the memory. It's a little thing for if I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what to work on. Well, then I can look at my list and think, oh, I said I wanted to get that done. So that's how I use it. A few people have asked me about it. No great um, uh, secret behind it. So that's the list. Right, so that's that. Good. I've got some acquisitions, but I've also got a couple of things to show you that are going to be on the November list. Oh, sorry, I should have said with the Tolster tea, I, I weighed these and I've got 20 grams and 24 grams respectively left over. So from two skeins of fingering weight yarn, obviously you have to add that in if you're going to add that in. You could just use DK or you could hold the fingering weight double. Um, I've got, you know, I've got a pair of socks left there if I wanted to knit some socks. Just thought I'd mention that. 
because I'm going to be twisting your arms to make one of these. Right. Okay, what about the 1908 sweater, I hear you'll say. What about the 1908 sweater? Hmm. I'll not lie. I was happy to put that to one side whilst I was working on the toaster tea. I've also been sewing like a demon. I think I said I've managed to finish two quilt tops plus, no, three quilt tops plus potentially another one and some other bits and pieces. So I've been doing mostly big machine sewing, but I will talk about that. If you're interested in my uh, sewing and my quilt and hand stitching adventures, I will record next week for that and bring you up to date with that. But let's have a look at 1908. Now there's not a lot changed, but the good news is that the last couple of days I have picked it up again. If you remember, I had a real struggle to get my head round the instructions for this pattern. And I'd done that much and had to rip it all out because I'd done it completely wrong. So I have now finally, after four attempts, Oh, excuse me, I'm going to make you all yawn now. Okay, let's just have that. After four attempts, I have finished the rib and I have done the first row, the first round of the cables. Now you won't, I don't think you'll be able to see, you might be able to see a bit of that. There. A little bit of cabling. But you'll also see I have added stitch markers between every cable repeat. So hopefully now it'll be relatively plain sailing, just in case anybody hadn't seen the... I had to reprint the pattern. I had written so much over the pattern. If I can find that to show you. I'd scribbled and I'd... Yeah, I'd better not show you that, but it's you know, not really readable now. So I printed out a new, sorry, just adjusting the thing, printed out a new pattern, wrote only what I needed on it. That's, that's what it is. So it's this pattern by Thea Coleman, who is Baby Cocktails, 1908. And I still absolutely love this. And I'm using good old Durerum Natura in the Gilead, which is their worsted weight. You could use this to make a coiver as well, or a um, easy V. Yeah, there you go. Durerum Natura Gilead, and it's French and Portuguese Merino. Quite rustic-y, but it's lovely. And this colorway is the rose, wood rose, isn't it? Dog rose, bois de rose, which I talked about last time. I've got this in my lovely um, thing in my bag, which I can't remember the name of. Where am I? I'm sorry. But I picked it up again, and I'm planning to work on this this month. Don't know if I'll get it finished. We'll see. I would love to because I've got, oh, I've got a new acquisition to show you for a new project. And I also have another big project to start in January. But we'll see how we go. Oh, let me just put that away. So that's the 1908 top. Put that there. Okay, so I also cast on last night actually. Um, I just got the urge because now I'm going to be knitting the hat, the cable top, I've got a lace shawl, and I'm going to be knitting another sock project which none of which are travel knitting tv knitting friendly or anything like that so i thought i have to have something um amber yarn hoarder posted her her november podcast on um, patreon and i really wanted to watch it but i didn't have anything to knit on that i could knit on whilst i was watching a podcast so that was no good so i decided to cast on a pair of socks for Hannah, for my daughter. Hopefully she flips through this. Hannah, if you're watching this, don't watch it. 
Traditionally, I make her a pair of shorty socks for her birthday. Her birthday is the 2nd of December and she either gets some birthday or Christmas. So I decided I would grab one of those aforementioned skeins of yarn that have been sitting in my stash. And I really fancied doing two at a time toe up socks. I've never been a fan of two at a time apart from the last time when I did two at a time mittens and actually I really enjoyed that so I think I'm going to try so I grabbed a festive project bag from my lovely friend Cherie who's Ollie and Bella I got this last year oh actually that's all sort of sugar plum fairy nutcracker sweet isn't it that was it and I pulled out a pattern which I had already which again, is, it's really lovely when you can actually support friends and use friends' patterns and bags and yarns. Just makes it so lovely. 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 Catch myself saying things sometimes. Do you do that? Um, and I think, where were you brought up? So I am making the Sweet Vanilla Socks. That's Jules's version. They are... As the pattern would imply, they are plain socks, toe up with her beanie toe and godet heel. And I knit these, I knit the St. Nick socks last year, her Christmas pattern, which she did in conjunction with Kelly at Lay Family Young. And that was the first time I'd used Jules pattern for socks. And I love it. I almost prefer knitting her godet heel with the gusset and the beanie toe. Really enjoyed knitting that. So I thought, right, I'm going to use that. So that's the one. And the yarn is, oh, it's just, this, oh no, it's Everyday Sock again. I don't know why I bought this and not the original. I think these were probably ones I could only get a hold of. Lolo did it, Everyday Sock, which is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in the Kryptonite colourway. And I've had these a long time, so I don't know whether this yarn is still available. And let me show you if it's not. I have wound on to two separate skeins, uh, two separate cakes. That is the colourway. So it's sort of aqua, tealy blue on a grey blue background. I wasn't sure when I looked at it in the skein, I thought it might well be a micro striper. But of course I'm only on the toe at the moment, so we can't tell, but oh my goodness, I am loving this. And I'm also loving my little stitch marker, which I think, I think might be Sukrasuka or Simply Serving. I honestly can't remember, but I got it with the St. Nick yarn from Lay Family Yarn last year. Look how pretty that is. It's such a gorgeous colour and obviously the hot chocolate progress keeper which I have to put there because sometimes when I'm knitting in there I forget when I'm doing toe up where I started from <laughs> I just can't help pulling faces but isn't that such gorgeous colourway I hope you can see all the, the greeny tealy bluey speckles in there well not speckles just colours perhaps I can see more that side probably there so it is looking like it's going to micro stripe. I'm nearly at the full width of the socks, so and I'm still getting the micro stripes. So that's going to be brilliant. These are going to be shorties, um, I suspect, or I will do just a long turn down cuff if I want to use up the yarn. But um, obviously, you can convert a normal sock pattern to a shorty sock pattern. Once I've done, I've got one more row of increases to do for the toe and then I'm going to cast on the second toe and put them both on to one set of needles and see if I can manage the two at a time. Not manage, whether I can be bothered with the two at a time, basically what it comes down to. So, they're those socks. So that's definitely, they're definitely on the November list. Um, but I'm also going to be casting on a new pattern, new to me, which are the Kadocha socks, slipper socks, which are these. 
and that's there. I looked up how you pronounce it. You can see I've written the phonetic pronunciation there, Kadocha. And they are thrummed slippers or thrummed socks. And this is a pay for pattern by Isolde. And I really fancied having a go at these. Okay. See, so they're thrummed on the cuff and on the sole. So if you've never tried thrummed patterns, thrummed mitts, um, I didn't know you could do thrummed socks, but I specifically looked for them. You're basically winding in, you're knitting in some unspun fibre in with your normal spun yarn so that as you wear it, so the, the inside is all fluffy and yarny and as you wear it, it felts and so basically creates this really, really warm, toasty um, covering. So people tend to do thrummed mitts and thrummed socks. So I bought the yarn that was suggested on the pattern, which is, I'm sorry, I have to smell this, it's so lovely, so sheepy, new Lanark wool, and it's British wool, 100% pure new wool. Um, and I bought it in the, oat, I think it's called oatmeal, I'm not sure, oh, natural. Um, can you see that? It's slightly oatmeal-y. And that actually, I think, is the colourway on there anyway. So I bought two skeins of those and I bought those from Northern Yarn, um, which is a website there. They do quite a lot of New Lanark yarn and bits and bobs from them. And then I think I'm going to use my very precious stash of North Runnelty Roving which I bought direct from North Ronaldsey when I bought some North Ronaldsey yarn, which I will get to in a moment. This was a few, a couple of years ago. Now, I used to spin. I used to have an e-spinner. Recently, I decided actually that spinning is not for me. Um, that's not the thing that I get real joy from. I enjoy it, but, you know, it's not really something for me. So I uh, sold, passed on my e-spinner and all the fibre, bar about two or three bags that I kept back. So I gave it, passed it on to a friend and hopefully she will be sharing her adventures because she has a podcast, but I'm not going to say who it is in case she doesn't want to admit. But I kept this North Ronaldsey fibre. Those of you who aren't aware, North Ronaldsey is an island off the coast of Scotland and the North Ronaldsey sheep are sheep who live on the beach and feed primarily of seaweed, which is amazing. If you Google it and look at the pictures of these sheep, what happened was many years ago, the farmers um, fenced off all the pasture land or all the, the fields because they didn't want the sheep destroying their crops. So the sheep kind of moved on to the beach and have adapted over time to live off seaweed, which is absolutely, I just think that's enchanting. So this is light brown, this colourway. It smells so sheepy. And there's your fibre. So it's roving. And I was going to spin it, but actually I'm going to use it as the thrums. I mean, it's not going to be super colourful, but I would love to use this and have that keeping my feet warm. So, yeah. That's what I'm going to be making. So I watched, I've mentioned before, Sarah from Fibre Trek, the Fibre Trek podcast. She's very much into place based yarn and she recently visited Orkney from, she lives in New England in Maine, and she visited Orkney and she wanted to go to North Ronaldsey, um, but I don't think she made it, but she talks about North Ronaldsey yarn a lot as well. But that's so the Kadocha. Feet is what I'm going to be making this month. So again, you have to prepare the fibre, pull it out into sort of eight inch small strips. And then as you're knitting, you just wrap it around the needle and knit it in with the stitch that you're knitting. And you leave the end on the inside sort of dangling. And that's the bit that gets all warm and lovely. 
and I figure if it can keep Scottish sheep warm on beaches, then it can keep feet warm in the south on the south coast. So that are the Kadocha feet. So the last thing in terms of knitting I'm going to talk to you about is oh, oh yeah, I no forget that. Is I have two lace shawls on the go. I started them both last year when I really wanted to knit lace. I love knitting lace. And they've sat there. Now I've got two. One is the Kyla Wrap by Isabel Kramer. I haven't brought that to show you. I have put it on Instagram before and it's in a beautiful mustard yellow that I bought um, linen quill from Pearl Soho and it's lovely. It's a massive shawl though. The other one is, oh, I didn't bring my book, I do apologise, but when I bought the North Ronalds yarn, I bought a pattern book as well. And I bought, I think, five skeins, three skeins of the yarn, as well as the fibre. Um, this was, it's the light brown again. Yeah. So this is North Ronalds yarn, spun on the island, it's a two ply. And it's sort of a fingering weight yarn. Pretty sure it's a two ply. Looks like, oh, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, and this is called the Cat's Paw Wrap, which I've got because it's in a book. I photocopied. No, I photocopied the chart. I'll try and remember next time to show you the book that it came in. It's quite an old-fashioned book. And this is where I've got to with this. Actually, I really do need to find the book to show you, don't I? Because you'll see, but you can get, it's one of those wraps. So you've got your provisional cast on, you knit outward to the end. Yeah, and then what you do is you're going to add a middle section and add another outward. So it's symmetrical as opposed to all going the same way. So both sections go out from the middle. And that is where I've got to. It's quite a big wrap, but it's so, actually it's probably that wide. So I've got it on long enough cable there. So you can see I haven't done a super lot, but I really, really like this. I love working with such a organic-y, sheepy yarn. So that's what I'm going to be working on this month. I was going to put it to the vote, but I made a decision. It's going to be this one. And then the Kyla wrap will have to be either the beginning of next year or a bit further on, although it is on my list, so I need to get it done by July. It will be. So this is obviously a little bit, it's not a really hard lace pattern, but I do need to think about what I'm doing. So, but it is, it's just beautiful yarn. I don't know if it's spun in the grease, but it's so soft. Um, and that is in the project bag I made last, last autumn that I made and quilted myself from fabric from my mum's stash. So when she passed away, I took a lot of her bits and bobs of fabric and I made myself a project bag. And I love that one. It's, it's actually padded quilted and it's, I practiced my free motion quilting on that. So that's the cat's paw wrap. So that's going to be featured over the next month. Right, excellent. So just a couple of acquisitions to share with you. In fact, yeah, two acquisitions. I won't talk to you about the big sweater for January. We'll save that for the next podcast. But the first acquisition is, if I can get it, I purchased this book, Observations by Lotta, Lotta Lothgren, Lothgren, Lotta H. Lothgren, published by Liner Publishing. And it's Observations, Knits and Essays from the Forest. It's a knitted walk through the forest and the seasons. 
With a keen eye for the innate wonders of the natural world, Lotta Lotgren combines knitwear designs with notes of the landscape she calls home. There's nine knitwear patterns and essays about living a life close to nature. The patterns have been created in a quiet conversation with the land, drawing elements from the natural world and translating them into stitches and fabric, Lotta says. So I couldn't resist that. I was buying some yarn from, um, is it Sophie at Botanical Yarn? I think it might be. Um, and I saw this on the website and I, I just loved it. I love the idea of it and I love that sweater. I absolutely love that. Um, when I got it, I must tell you this, I opened it and it was really weird because it's actually not glued, the binding, but it didn't look like it had come away or torn. And I realized, I think the reason they've done this is so that it can lay flat. So it's all stitched there. So when you're reading or when you're knitting from a pattern, look, it sits pretty much flat, which I think is really cool. And if you've bought any liner books in the past, you know how lovely their um, the print, the paper is really papery. <laughs> it's, I'm finding a picture. This is called the Badger Sweater. Uh, there you go. Get it right there, which I really love. And then that's the one from the front cover. But there are some other lovely patterns in here. You can see kind of there. Although I love the print style and the paper and the ink and all of that, sometimes the liner, I, I don't like their aesthetic. I don't like the mean and moody, dark and brooding kind of um, photography that you get with them. But this isn't, this isn't like that at all. That sweater, look. Again, a tea, you could use that with our knitted tea along. Um, there's quite a few in here that I like. I haven't read the book yet, but I'm going to be reading that through November. So that's a good one. I'll let you know about that. And then finally, in terms of acquisitions, last but by no means least, and I'm going to have to pull up a picture on my phone to show you. So please accept my apologies for me just doing this. Let's go... Um, Go on to Ravelry. This sweater has been on my list. Oh, I've changed phones and I don't know what my I I don't know what my username is and my password, for goodness sake. Um, let's see if I can just get it up. There we go. Let's see if that will come up. There it is. I have wanted to make this sweater for ages, ever since I saw it. Oh, well, blow me down. Don't blow me down. I can't believe this. I have just found a new podcast literally today that I think I'm going to really enjoy. And I've written it down and I was going to mention it. Only turns out that she's designed this sweater. I mean, what other chances? There's something subliminal going on there. Anyway, the sweater is the drawing sweater. Can you see that? And it's by Tomomi Yashimoto. Still can't actually believe. I'll show you the picture I found that really did it for me. Is that the one? Some of these. Some people's colour choices really speak to you, don't they? And some people's don't. This one in particular, I thought was absolutely stunning. Can you see that? Is that going to focus? Come on. I don't know if that's... Should I go really near? Right in your face, aren't I? There you go. I absolutely love that. So... I bought some yarn for it and it's going to be, I've got to say two big knits. I've got that one after Christmas, this is going to be, so I'm not casting this on yet. I bought Mayak yarn. 
which is the Ethical Yarn Company from Italy. Look at this sweet postcard they sent me. They're doing a lot of Zodiac kits, at, um, Zodiac colourways at the moment. Oh no, that was Botanical Yarn. It was Sophie from Botanical Yarn, if you want to know. Mayak Tibetan Fibres, and I bought their Tibetan Cloud um, yarn, which is exclusively from an ancient breed of sheep that roam freely on the grassland of the Tibetan Plateau. Respect for animal welfare, they're reared by nomads and sheared, no, they're sheared by nomads and reared in traditional methods. And I think it's wool and spun by the feel of it, I'm not sure. But anyway, that's the label. And I bought this direct from Mayak and literally they're in Italy and they got this posted to me the next day. It was so quick and there was no import duties or anything to pay on this. I'm in the UK and sometimes with Europe since we left the EU, it's a bit dodgy, but it was fine. This is sport weight or a light DK, 100% wool, 100 grams, 300 meters, 328 yards. So that's it, this colourway, as you can see, I've really splashed out. It's the Wild Daisy colourway. So this is gonna be for the, the actual flowers. Wait till you see the colour for the sweater. Mm. Ta -da! I just thought you've gotta go for it. I just, bright pink and cream with that flower sweater, with the drawing sweater. Oh, I just think it's gonna be amazing. So this colourway is Drop Dead Gorgeous. Uh, where are we? There we go. Drop Dead Gorgeous. So I purchased, I've got three skeins of this. And then I only needed one skein of the white for the flowers. I'm really excited about making this. I can't wait. But I must. I must because it's not going to be, might be on the December list if I can get other things done. My November list isn't that long actually because I deliberately wanted to free up some time for um, crafting for Christmas, getting some bits and bobs made that maybe will just come to mind as they do. So that's all the knitting content, well all the knitting bits I've got to show you. I don't think there is um, anything else there. So all that's left is for me to talk to you about the knit along. Let me have a quick sip. Okay, we've hit an hour, so that's not bad for me. Anyway, so the knit along. Yay, it's, sorry, that was a bit lame, wasn't it? The knit along is called Oh Christmas Tea. See what I did there? Do you know what I did there? Bit of a play on words. And it's basically running from the 6th of November, so that's Monday the 6th of November next week, through to 12th night, which is the 6th of January 2024. So you've got till next year to knit it. <laughs> now, I, I started this because of the Tolster tea. But another lovely designer has also offered us a discount code on her tea, and I need to look that up. I will put all the, all the details below. It's Laura Penrose, and she works with Kelly at Lay Family Yarns, who is also behind this knit along with me. Um, so there will be a discount code for her patterns, and Rebecca from um, Crabby is also giving us a discount code for her patterns for the Tolster tea. So. Um, if you want to join in and you want to use either of those, then um, I will be posting the pattern discount codes. If I haven't got them by the time this goes up, I will edit this and add it to the details below, but I will also put it on Instagram. So you should get the discount code. I'm doing this hand in hand with Kelly at Lay Family Yarn. I should say Kelly and Nick really, but, um, and so she is offering a discount code for her yarn if you want to buy 
Christmas yarn. And the reason I say Christmas yarn, it doesn't have to be Christmas yarn. This is very informal. But the reason I'm making another Tolster tea is because of Kelly's absolutely beautiful Christmas yarn sets that we were in her update end of last week and I reached out to her and I said, I need to knit another Tolster tea in your colorways. And she said, so do I. <laughs> so let's do a knit along. So hence, oh, Christmas tea was born. Now, sadly, my post hasn't arrived yet. Um, the yarn that Kelly has sent me, um, which I, you know, um, chose. Let me find Kelly and I'll show you the colorways that I have chosen. It's on Instagram, but it's called, the colorway I've chosen is Frosted Eucalyptus. Watch, look at that. Hopefully that's gonna focus. There you go. So I'm going to be using the main color for the body of this tea. And then those mini stripes, I'm gonna stripe them like I've done here, but they'll change. And I'm gonna get, um, I'm also going to find, I haven't found my colorway yet, but I'm gonna get some midnatosol probably. If not, the Drops Surya Packer is lovely as well. But this one is, I think, my favorite. I'm gonna get a, a, a color that will go with those and I'm gonna knit the Tolster Tea from that Christmas set. Um, so she's got a whole load of other colorways here. I also love the Naughty or Nice sets. You see those? Which you could do really fun stripes. The lovely thing about this is, and she talks about this on her podcast, um, which is on her YouTube channel, um, that although they're Christmas colorways, they're not in your face Christmas. So they're sort of wintry. So you could wear them, you know, whenever. Um, so if you want to buy some of Kelly and Nick's yarn, there will be a coupon code coming to join in with that. I would encourage you also to dig into your stash. Um, as I say, two skeins of fingering weight yarn and I use, I've got that left over, plus a Surrey or a mohair. Or you could just use DK. You could buy DK yarn from Kelly or again, DK yarn in your stash. It's such um, potentially a budget-friendly economical pattern um, that it, it doesn't break the bank. It really doesn't. I mean, knit it with big box yarns if you have to, if you want to, if that's your thing. So make it work for you. Um, but there, just be aware there will be discount codes. There's also prizes. Yay! Um, Lovely Jewels of So Sweet Violet is going to be donating a prize. I'm going to be getting prizes from her as well to offer. And the key thing you have to do, what I really want is I want some festive fun. I just want this to be something that we can all get excited about, Christmassy, make it as festive and Christmassy as you like. So there's going to be um, a few, the, the idea is that you're going to be entered into prize draws for each post you post on Instagram. Now don't panic if you're not on Instagram, you can email me your pictures and I will include those in the draw. So you're not gonna be cut out if you're not on Instagram. Um, but it was the easiest way to do it. I don't really use Ravelry as a chat group now, so it was easier to do it on Instagram. Use the hashtag Oh Christmas Tea, Oh Christmas Tea Cal, and when you've got an FO, Oh Christmas Tea FO. And the idea is I would like you to post Christmassy pictures of you doing or with your knitting and knitting your Christmas tea. So, for example, um, if you go Christmas shopping and there's a nice display, grab, take your knitting for goodness sake. I'd love to see a picture of you with your knitting next to a Christmas tree or you knitting whilst you're in the supermarket buying your Christmas turkey <laughs> or putting the decorations up or the Christmas tree, uh, sorry, the Christmas tea next to a pile of Brussels sprouts. Or, if you're really clever, knitting your Christmas tea whilst at a turkey farm. I'd be amazed if anybody manages to do that. 
Um, maybe if you're taking your kids to visit Santa, you could get Santa to hold your knitting and get a picture of that. So if it's just, if you're just posting an update on your knitting, you can, you can put the hashtag obviously, but if it's, if it's definitively Christmas themed, if you've got Santa, a Christmas tree, a Christmas decoration, Christmas food, anything like that, you will get double points. You will get double dip into the prize draw. You will also get double points or double entries if you're using Lay Family Yarn. You'll get double points if you have in your picture a knitting notion from So Sweet Violet. So if you've got some of your stitch markers, get them onto your knitting, post it and tag. You must tag so that I know. So tag Lay Family Yarn, tag Jules, So Sweet Violet, tag me, Clara Pegatty, but also use the hashtag. Um, I will put everything below. So the idea is to put as many, obviously, you know, don't post every five minutes. Um, please don't post every five minutes, but you know, every few days, once a week, maybe an update of your knitting project with the hashtag Oh Christmas Tea. And then I will be drawing, I don't know yet whether I will draw once a month um, from the prize winners. I think I will. We'll do once a month for the whips. And then when it finishes on the 6th of January, I will draw for prizes from the finished objects hashtag. So that's the idea. Just making sure my husband's not back because um, I've got to wrap this up now. So if you can get together with a friend, heck yes, if there's more than one of you and you're doing a Christmas tea knit along, then you can have double points for that. So let's just make this really festive. I, I went out, I will just show you, I should actually put these up here. If I can, because as you know, I'm trying to use, um, yeah, I'll show you the sort of thing that I did this morning. I went to Donnell, which in the UK, you'll know, um, I got my friend Anne to take a picture of me with my toaster tea. It's a bit cheeky, but you get the gist. They're really big baubles. <laughs> um, and then there was one, oh no, you don't want to see that picture, of me next to a Christmas tree. Now that's with my finished object, obviously, but I just want to give you the idea. If you can take your knitting along with you, um, let's, really, let's really bring the festive to Instagram. Um, so yeah, there's going to be prizes. Oh, take your knitting carol singing. If you're carol singing and you can put a little video up of you knitting a Christmas carol singing or even in your lounge, then add that. Let's just make it really good fun. So that, my friends, is that. So I really hope, I really hope I've persuaded you to join in with it. It's participation um, primarily. You don't have to have a finished object for the 6th of January. If you've got loads of other knitting on the go, um, obviously do start it, cast on with the hope of finishing it, but there's no, no biggie. There's prizes along the way. Um, the idea is let's just get a bit of community festive spirit going and have a bit of fun. So as I say, use Instagram, email me pictures if you're not on Instagram, and I will put them up on my Instagram feed. Um, I don't have to put your name, but I can share them for you. And I probably will share other Instagram things on the stories. And hopefully, go and give Kelly and Nick some love. Go and give uh, Jules, So Sweet Violet, some love with bits from them. And let's get some toaster teas or some other teas knit for the Christmas season. Whew, right, we're done. We are done. And the camera is telling me that we're at one hour, 14 minutes, and that's straight through. So that should be able to go up fairly quickly this afternoon, if our internet is being kind. So happy knitting for the rest of November. I do wish you a very happy November. I hope those of you in the UK and the Channel Islands, if you're watching, are staying safe with Storm Kieran, although so far as we're concerned, it seems to be passing over now. I have to take the dog out now. <laughs> and for our US friends in November, 
Um, obviously it's the month of your Thanksgiving, so no excuse for having lots of festive decorations, festive pictures for the knit along there. I will be back here, I think, with a sewing podcast, probably next week. And then I've got a busy, I've got some exciting things coming up. I'm actually coming up, so I may well share those with you through the month. We'll see. I won't vlog because I'm not great at vlogging. I find it a bit too much pressure. But maybe I'll add to, um, maybe I'll podcast again before the end of November. Certainly if we get a good response to the Chris, Oh Christmas Tea knit along, I will just to keep you all up to date with that. So yes, take care my friends. God bless you all. Enjoy your knitting and I will see you soon.